Please permit me to identify myself. My name is Andrew Pipe, and I'm the director of the Prevention and Rehabilitation Center at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute. Several of people have asked me what it is that I do there. I tell them that my task is to help people die young as late as possible. <laughs> Another way of looking at this is that you may think of Dr. Keon as, and his surgical colleagues as being the people that sow. We're the ones that help you reap the benefit. I'll just keep tossing them out. If you like them, laugh. If you, if you don't, it's a distinct honor and no small pleasure to have been asked to share with you in the celebration of, the act, of these, tonight's activities. I could not have dared imagine some 30 years ago when as a callow intern I first met Dr. Keon that 30 years later I would be here with you tonight helping to celebrate the contributions of a truly remarkable individual. I will be very brief this evening. The importance of brevity was driven home to me some weeks ago when I was speaking at a conference and I heard two members of the audience speak to each other. One said, he's not as big a bore as he used to be, is he? <laughs> to which the other replied, no, he's definitely lost weight. <laughs> Dr. Keon, Senator, Mrs. Keon, and welcome, bienvenue. This is your night, c'est votre soirée. And now it's my pleasure to call upon the chairman of the board of the Heart Institute, Mr. Gordon Ritchie, to say a few words of welcome. His job is to talk to you. Your job is to listen. I hope you all finish at the same time. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pipe. It certainly is the case that if Fraser Rubens lost his magic touch in the operating room, he wouldn't go very long without finding gainful employment in his other talent. In your case, uh, Andrew, I think I'd keep my day job if I were you. <laughs> it's uh, my great pleasure to welcome you all to this extraordinary tribute to a great Canadian. Mesdames, Messieurs, Je vous souhaite le bienvenu à ce témoignage à un individu extraordinaire qui a fait une contribution sans parallèle à notre communauté et à notre pays. I have known uh, Dr. Wilbur J. Keon since he launched his dream nearly 30 years ago and have had the privilege to work particularly closely with him over the past decade. It's been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. It has been a remarkable ride. We've had our ups and our downs and our roundabouts, but through it all, Dr. Keon kept squarely focused on the main goal, that of bringing outstanding cardiac care to the people of this region. Dr. Keon has now decided to step away from the helm of the institute that he founded, but not before satisfying himself that we had chosen a worthy successor, Dr. Bob Roberts, who became CEO of the institute at the beginning of this month. Dr. Roberts and his wife Donna are here with us tonight, and I would ask them if you permit to take a bow. Welcome as the newest citizens of Ottawa, Dr. and Donna Roberts. We have great hopes and expectations for the Institute over the coming years, building on the foundation that Willie Keon has so capably established. Tonight is one small way for us to say thank you, Dr. Keon, for your unparalleled contribution to your community, to your country, and to your profession. Merci, Dr. Keon, pour votre contribution sans parallèle à votre communauté, à votre pays et à votre profession. This is at the same time an opportunity to further the work of the Institute through the financial support of all of you in attendance this evening. 
The chairman of our foundation, Bill Colby, is adding up the numbers right now and will give us the tally in a few minutes. It remains for me to thank you all for coming and to invite you to enjoy what promises to be truly an evening to remember. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attention. We have an unbelievable evening ahead of us. And to begin, I'd like to introduce to you now a very special friend and indeed a very special guest. Dr. Keon's influence is felt way beyond the confines or the boundaries of, city, of the city of Ottawa or the province of Ontario. His trainees, his fellows have gone out throughout North America, benefiting from his leadership and his education and they themselves occupy leadership positions in hospitals and medical centers throughout the continent. I am particularly pleased to be able to introduce to you to this evening a phenomenal woman, someone whom Dr. Keon trained several years ago, and who now is a cardiac surgeon at the Foothills Hospital in Calgary, Alberta. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Dr. Terry Keezer. Thank you, Andrew. I'll get you for this. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues, honored guests. I'm delighted to be here. I just had a couple of things I just wanted to say. First, I would like to say a, wife, a word to your dear wife, Anne. Thank you for your patience and tolerance of your husband's career. As my husband once said to me, you are easy to live with, but your career is not. I know that you have been a quiet and immeasurable pillar of strength for Wilbert. There could not have been a more serene first lady to a first cardiac surgeon. <laughs> Dr. Keon, I have one little anecdote I wish to recount. Now, punctuality is and has never been your forte probably the only thing on this earth you're not good at. One day when the OR was waiting a little longer than usual and were getting a little testy, you showed up and scrubbed for your requisite 20 seconds. Bugs don't grow on Willie Keon, we were taught as residents. <laughs> and... <laughs> Sorry, boss. <laughs> And just as you're about to walk into the OR, Nancy, one of our dearly loved OR nurses for her sense of humor, picked up our leprechaun surgeon by his middle, kicked the door open with her foot, and asked in a loud voice, anybody need a surgeon? <laughs> Joking aside, one of the most impressive comments I have ever heard said about any cardiac surgeon was that when you looked through the OR window into Dr. Keon's operating room, you couldn't tell whether Willie was up to his neck in alligators or it was just a regular case. Dr. Keon, you have the kingly way of making everybody perform at their very best during the worst of times. And I'm sure you do this not only in the operating room, but in boardrooms and in Senate houses also. Dr. Keon, thank you for showing us that one can be great and not intimidating, brilliant and humble, all at the same time. And may God bless you, one of your humble disciples. Thank you so much, Terry. 10,000 open heart surgical procedures, 36 years of service, attendance at thousands of community events and fundraisers, 475 distinct and different academic presentations, 
over 380 scientific publications, including authorship or contributions to more than 22 books, officially appointed as visiting professor on 16 separate occasions, a participant in 72 national and international societies or associations. The list goes on and on. Tonight, we pause to celebrate the extraordinary contributions and the talents of a great Canadian. Dr. Wilbert J. Keon, Order of Canada, Senator. Ce soir, nous reconnaissons Dr. Wilbert Keon, notre ami, notre collègue, et une source d'inspiration et d'encouragement. Described as one of the finest cardiac surgeons of his generation, he has exhibited extraordinary compassion and courage throughout his remarkable career. Sa vision et son leadership a créé l'Institut de cardiology. En 1990, Dr. Kian a été nommé sénateur. Innovation has been the hallmark of Dr. Kian's career. He has attracted, in support of his work, research grants totaling $66 million during his career. His clinical innovations are numerous, but most notably include the pioneering of surgical reperfusion, the reestablishment of the circulation to the heart during the phase of an acute heart attack. This was accomplished in the early 1970s. He performed the first cardiac transplant in Ottawa in 1983, used for the first time the Jarvik 770 artificial heart in Canada in 1986, and in 1989 performed the first Canadian infant heart transplant. Honored by his peers in 2001 as a living legend, Dr. Keon was a cardiac research pioneer and the first Canadian surgeon to implant an artificial heart as a bridge to transplantation. His accomplishments are many. His achievements are legendary. But I have some personal recollections I would wish to share. <laughs> Stephen Leacock, I think it was once said, it was who once said, I owe my teachers a lot and I intend to pay them back someday. <laughs> Little did I know that it would be in front of 900 of Ottawa's finest. I do recall one day being in the hallway outside Dr. Keon's office and hearing a rather spirited conversation which went sort of like this with Sue Slater, his indefatigable assistant. Little lady, can you all tell me where the head hog is? Excuse me, sir. At the University of Ottawa Heart Institute, we do not refer to Dr. Keon as the head hog. <laughs> well, I don't care what y'all do here, but I'm looking for the head hog. I intend to see him. Pardon me, sir, but I don't think you understand. We just don't refer to Dr. Keon as the head hog. Well, you all know that's too bad because he operated on my cousin from Louisiana a couple months back. I'm coming up here to make a substantial donation to the Institute. <laughs> One moment, sir. I think I hear the little porker coming down the hall. Dr. Keon's origins in the Ottawa Valley, the upper Ottawa Valley, not quite the end of the world, but you can see it from there, <laughs> are very well known. He was one of a very large family. For the first eight years of his life, he thought his name was Fetch Wood. <laughs> his younger brother thought he was called Fetch More Wood. But, but a story that has not very often been repeated concerns Dr. Keon and one of his brothers who one night in an Irish kind of way, we're celebrating some event or the other. <laughs> Using potions that only the Irish have access to or understand the use of. Uh, they were staggering, I mean, they were wandering around Sheenborough later that night and they happened to fall into the graveyard where their reveries continued and Willie's brother said to him, holy jeez, Willie, look at this. Look at this gravestone. This guy lived to be 103. Well, he said, just a second, I know who that is. 
That's Miles from Ottawa. <laughs> Do you ever feel the oxygen just get sucked right out of a room? I mean, it's a biological phenomenon that you don't often... Take a deep breath, ladies and gentlemen. Let your belts out. I know you're well-fed, but... <laughs> Dr. Keon has received numerous medical, scientific, and community awards. They include the Order of Canada, the Order of Ontario, and membership in the Order of St. Gregory the Great, received from the hands of Pope John Paul II. He is a visionary, a leader, a teacher, a mentor, and dare I say, a pretty highly successful fundraiser. And you know, in that vein, and representing tonight's presenting sponsor, Arnon Development and the Vered and Besner families, would you please welcome Ron Vered. On behalf of the Besner and Verrett families, it is with great joy, admiration, and appreciation that we sponsor tonight's even, event. To pay tribute to you, Dr. Keon, one must have some understanding of the nature, scope, and the value of your accomplishments and how you've achieved them. When I look around this room, I believe that each of us has somewhat a different experience and appreciation of your accomplishments from both an intellectual and emotional perspective. With your own two hands, you have saved lives. From my personal perspective, I look to table 17 and see my parents, Zeb and Sarah. You operated on and saved my father's life twice. You did this not only with your technical skills, but also with your personal dedication and compassion. My mother tells the story that a few days after my father's second operation, you called her just after midnight to personally inform her, to comfort her, and to forewarn her that my father contracted pneumonia and about the necessary measures you were taking. Patients are human, and as such, sometimes the outcomes are not always what you want. However, my family knew that no matter what, my father was receiving the best of care. My parents, my brothers, Arnie, Gilly, and I have been supportive of health care in this community for many years in different ways. Through these efforts, we have always been able to gain a better, through these efforts, we have been able to gain a better understanding of your accomplishments beyond the patients you have personally treated. Health care administrators must face every day an extremely complex system with inherent challenges. In this very difficult environment, you have created a fantastic and caring institution consisting of 800 people, people who continue to provide excellent care and push the envelope of our collective knowledge through research and education. When I look beyond table 17 to table 32, I see my wife Jennifer. We, like others, have recently experienced tragedy as a result of a shortcoming in the healthcare system. So what does this all lead me to understand and appreciate? Any one of us at any time may experience the best of medical care, but not always. That compassion is a critical component of medical care. Dr. Keon, you've always provided excellent care with compassion. Dr. Keon, I have a thank you, a pledge, and a request. Thank you for the care and compassion you've shown to my family, to your patients, and to your community. Thank you for creating an institution that continues your work that this community so greatly benefits from. Thank you for pushing the standard of care higher and higher and being an example and an inspiration to all health professionals. 
Now, Dr. Keon might pledge. Tom Hewitt, please do not get too excited. It is not a monetary pledge. <laughs> Besides, Tom, you probably did pretty well already tonight. I pledge and ask others to pledge to you, Dr. Keon, and to what you represent and to what you've created and inspired, that I, that we, do what we can to break down the barriers and improve the environment in order that you and other dedicated health professionals like you can achieve your goals and dreams. <laughs> Lastly, my request, and Mrs. Keon, please forgive me. Dr. Keon, don't stop. Dr. Keon, just don't stop. In your work as a senator, please continue to contribute, shape, our med and shape our medical world. Please help ensure that the great potential and the knowledge that we as Canadians and are so fortunate to have continues to grow and excel. Please continue to help create an environment that the quality of our medical institutions can flourish in. Please do this in order that any one of us at any one time will receive the best of medical care that each of us as human beings so justly deserve. The best of medical care is what you personify in all, in all respects. Thank you, Dr. Keogh. Thank you so much, Ron. I know that you speak on behalf of the countless people who have been touched and helped by Dr. Keon and the team he has assembled at the Heart Institute. I would now like ask you to please turn your attention to the screens for a very special tribute to Dr. Keon. Hi, Willie. Hey, what a great night this is, and what a wonderful place to hold a party. I mean, this is as good as it gets. Willie, we are so proud of you. I got together with some of your friends. We want to do something for you. And I say a few of your friends because you have so many. You are very rich and blessed. So these are some of the friends we got together with. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi, hi Willie. Hi. Say hi to Willie. Hi, hi Willie. Willie. Willie, these are just some of the things we'd like to say to you. We want to say thanks for making our day, for touching our hearts in your own special way, for everything you've given us, Willie. We want to say thanks. We want to say thanks for giving us back our lives, for taking away the tears that were cried, for everything you've given us, Willie. We want to say thanks. How many ways can we say thanks? Well, let's see. Thanks. For making me number one heart transplant. Thanks. Thanks. For daring to use the Jarvik heart for the first time to save my life. For life. For giving me my family again. For being there when we needed you. We just want to say thanks. Wilbert, we're so sorry we can't be with you this evening, but we want you to know that We've enjoyed our association with you. We think you're a marvelous Canadian and a great humanitarian. And what you've done for Ottawa and for Canada, it's immeasurable. So tonight, we celebrate with everyone in the room. And we want to send you our love and our best wishes to you and your family for a job incredibly well done. Thanks. Thank you for all you've done for the community, Dr. Keon. Thank you for what you've done, Dr. Keon, and enjoy your retirement. Thanks. We wish you the very best in your retirement. Um, there are a number of people that you have trained. I am one of them, fortunate enough to have worked with you so closely. You were a tremendous inspiration. You're a tremendous surgeon, a great visionary, and you built the Ottawa Heart Institute and have given us examples of what we should follow in our own individual institutions. And uh, I wish you the very best in the future and thank you very much. Wilbert, it has been a remarkable experience working with you for 27 years. You allowed me to grow as the Institute grew and to be part of a phenomenal team that has made a difference in our community. For everything you've given us, Willie, 
We want to say thanks. For a second chance. We want to say thanks. For nine more wonderful years. For giving me back my dreams. We just want to say thanks for all that you've done. In our hearts, Willie, you're number one. For everything you've given us, Willie, we want to say thanks. Dr. Keon, thank you for sharing so much of your fascinating world with the rest of the world, and thank you for allowing me and CJOH to be part of it. Thanks so much for giving us more time with those we love the most. We just, we just want to say, say thanks. thanks. Okay, again. We wish you the most beautiful retirement. Enjoy your family. Have fun. And may, may God bless you for everything you've done for everyone. It was a, a, indeed a pleasure to work uh, with you all of these years. Uh, we're going to sorely miss you, but I'm sure you'll be around to say hello now and then. All the best in the future. We want to say thanks for taking care of my heart. Thanks. It's been a privilege to work alongside you in the two years that I've been here. I'm 44 years old, and for 36 of those years in Ottawa, your name was Household. And uh, I can't say enough about the work you've done for this community. And on behalf of uh, all of us, thank you. Mille merci. You have always led with your heart, even when making financial decisions is sometimes easier, ignoring your heart. Dr. Keon, from the bottom of my heart, I'll miss you. Thanks. The foundation that, uh, that uh, Dr. Keon has set for us, for us is... Uh, uh, one that uh, we can carry forward to continue in the uh, fashion that uh, I believe will make him proud in the future. He always had that little special touch to every single person he met. Um, you know, it's amazing the number of people he comes in contact with that he always remembers one special thing about you. And I tell you, there'll be more than one that I'll remember about him. Um, it's been a pleasure and an honor, and I hope you do well in your retirement. We'll wish you wholeheartedly. People that I work with wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Thanks so much for making us a part of your dream for making the Institute one of the very best places that you could possibly ever work at. Thank you for being a surgeon, thank you for being a friend, thank you for being an administrator, and thank you for leading us all these years in the fantastic way that you've done it. Thanks, Willie. For everything you've given us, Willie, we want to say thanks. People really appreciate the Heart Institute, the community does. I come from a small community and we have nothing like this, and I'm so glad that we have it here and we have this to offer. Many people are great surgeons and many people are great teachers, but um, you have the ability to make everybody in the room feel important, no matter what we were doing, and um, thanks. Have a great life and we miss you. Your contribution to Ottawa and to the Valley, uh, to Ontario and Canada, is truly remarkable. And what you have done for so many people uh, at the Centre, at the University, uh, and in your practice uh, is uh, recorded really in the annals of the uh, great builders of Ottawa and, uh, and the region and the national capital. And what you've done as well in the Senate since you accepted appointment uh, uh, to a Parliament uh, is also a tremendous contribution to education, to scientific research uh, and to uh, medical advancement on behalf of all Canadians. And so. I want to join with Mila tonight in uh, saying to you how much we admire you, how much we've admired your contribution, and uh, how deeply uh, and affectionately we feel about you and the family. And so we want to wish you well tonight. For everything you've given us, Willie, we just want to say thanks.
What could possibly be more powerful or more eloquent than those expressions we just heard over the past few minutes? And I, on your behalf, want to thank CGAOH-TV and Wayne Rostad for creating that video and for your ongoing support of the Heart Institute. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it's time to hear from our guest of honor. Et maintenant, notre invité d'honneur, Dr. Wilbert Keon. How can I possibly say thanks after that? Andrew, thank you so much for handling this evening so competently. You know, Andrew, uh, I told this um, a few weeks ago over at the Heart Institute, but I'll tell you tonight because there are more of you. Um, Andrew came to us. He began in family medicine up in Sudbury. And uh, his career took a, a change for the worse when he was called one night uh, by a man who said, my wife's got acute appendicitis. And Andrew said, no, she doesn't have acute appendicitis. And the man said, yes, she does have acute appendicitis. And Andrew said, no, she doesn't have acute appendicitis. We took her appendix out three months ago. Have you ever heard of a person having two appendixes? And the man said, have you ever heard of a man having two wives? <laughs> so, that's what brought Andrew to us. First, uh, from Ann, Claudia, Mark, Jack, Christopher, Neil, Ryan, Cindy, Will, and Emily. Thank you so very much, everybody, for this splendid evening. I don't know where to begin with my thanks, and I will leave a lot of people out. But I will attempt to recognize those who made possible the accomplishments for which I am being honored tonight. First, let me thank Joanne, Nelson, and the members of our committee for organizing this fabulous evening. It required the full support and involvement of the boards of the foundation and of the board of directors of the institute. And I am enormously thankful to the great people on both those boards. Next, of course, I go back a bit, and comes my mother and my brothers and sisters, four of whom are with me here tonight, who in the early part of my life provided me with the love and security necessary to grow with a positive attitude an appreciation of what a great country I was born in and what great opportunities good education can provide. To man, who for the first nine years of our married life followed me through Montreal, Toronto, and Boston as I pursued the very best educational opportunities I could imagine, being freed from any financial worries since her teacher's salary kept bread on the table. I've said many times, life for me has been a bowl of cherries, because early in life, I found my guardian angel, 
And as soon as she could afford it, I married her. <laughs> I'm very pleased to be sharing the evening with my three children. My daughter-in-law, Cindy Tomlinson, and my son-in-law, Mark Field. In my very busy life, Claudia, Neil, and Ryan were a triple blessing. They made few demands and were always flexible enough that we enjoyed a great family life despite my busy time. They've all worked hard and established themselves in their own fields. Claudia is a PhD MD. Neil is a PhD engineer and professor of business in an American business school. Ryan's a lawyer with an LMM and both American and Canadian licensed. So I guess Daddy can't ask for much more than that. They are my proudest legacy, without doubt. In my professional life, there were so many great teachers, collaborators, associates, who unselfishly gave me their time. When I reflect on it all, I sometimes can't believe the trust and confidence that was placed in me and the generosity of time and spirit bestowed on me that allowed me, in my early development as a surgeon and a scientist, to vault into the company of a very select few on the continent. Another great pleasure in my life was the many, many young residents that I trained in collaboration with my other surgical colleagues and that Don trained and that the anesthetist trained and everybody, the basic scientists trained um, at the Institute, and they're all over the face of the earth now. Some of them are back here with us tonight. You saw Terry Kieser and Arvind Koshel, Dr. Srita Hara come in from San Diego, Dr. Algo Fali is uh, over here from Riyadh. Um, but it seems that no matter where we go from the Heart Institute, we have young protégés that work with us at some point in time, and that's a wonderful feeling. There's one man who over the past 30 years has been my friend, advisor, critic, conscience, indeed my professional soul. He indeed was my equal or better on most occasions, but for whatever reason, he chose to walk a step behind and truly was the wind beneath my wings. <clears throat> this, of course, as you know, is Don Beanlands. <clears throat> Together, Don and I leaned in the, into the heavy harness and tried to pull our weight as the staff grew and developed into the marvelous 700 that comprise the Heart Institute today. I want to acknowledge the basic scientists who are really the unsung heroes of the Heart Institute, who did the research and teaching together with the clinicians and implemented the bench to bedside philosophy. They had that wonderful capacity to think globally, and to raise the local bar to the global level. I especially want to acknowledge our nursing staff, first led by Rosemary Coombs, and currently under the guidance of Heather Sherrard. <laughs> They're known locally and indeed across the country as exemplary cardiac nurses with the most advanced techniques in clinical care, patient education, 
and nursing research. But they are best known for the special attention they give every patient. Thousands of patients over the years have told me that the care at the Heart Institute was just different and that the nurses would go to any lengths to do whatever it took to care for them and comfort them during their illness. Add to this the superb administrative staff, the technical and support staff, and you've got what it takes to be the very best. It's interesting to reflect <clears throat> for a moment on the forces that influenced my thinking and the collective thinking of those around me that ultimately produced the Heart Institute. As a young student, just like every other Canadian doctor, I was enormously influenced by the teaching and philosophies of Sir William Osler. Osler was generally accepted as the most influential physician in history. Two things about Osler left an indelible mark on my thinking. The first was that he emphasized to all his students that knowledge, the most essential pillar of medical practice, must always be applied with a combination of integrity, equanimity, and humanity. The second was his repeated assertion that he required the intellectual stimulation of different environments, and consequently his career led him from Toronto to McGill to the University of Pennsylvania to Johns Hopkins and eventually to Oxford. But probably his greatest achievement was the creation of the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research in New York, which was the first of many that would permeate the American scene. I tried to pursue that philosophy in my own medical scientific education, which was gleaned from five medical centers along the way. Another towering figure associated with my time at McGill Although he was a neurosurgeon by specialty, was Wilder Penfield. Penfield, like his hero Osler, was much traveled during his education from Princeton to Oxford to Johns Hopkins. Penfield had come to McGill from America, and having worked in the Neurological Institute at Columbia in New York, he joined the staff of the Royal Victoria Hospital in Montreal, which was the undisputed leading teaching hospital in Canada at the time. After a short period of time, he made his position very clear that if neurosciences were to find the rightful place in the global medical scene, McGill required a neurological institute. He, with the help of Dr. Cohn and Colin Russell, proceeded, and the rest is history. Of interest also, the groundbreaking research in epilepsy, which he carried out, was achieved through a collaborative network between Montreal, Germany, and Spain. Institutes have more flexibility than institutions such as hospitals and medical schools, where the roles and endeavors, particularly in Canada, are very tightly defined and controlled. Paradoxically, they are heavily dependent on alliances with universities and hospitals and other health institutions. This was so with the Ottawa Heart Institute, which was so heavily supported by the university in its initial phases and by the Ottawa Civic Hospital, and remains closely allied with the Ottawa Hospital and 42 other hospitals between James Bay and the St. Lawrence and in Western Quebec. So the future for the Institute looks very bright indeed, with an outstanding board of directors headed by Gordon Ritchie as a chairman, an outstanding foundation with Bill Colby as chair, with a special endowment campaign being headed by Lawrence Soloway, which already has raised $30 million for the future, 
of the Institute. So I believe things will be good for a very long time to come. I would like to acknowledge the presence here tonight of Dr. Terry Massena, who came all the way from southern France to enjoy our great Ottawa climate and replace me as chairman of cardiac surgery. <laughs> Terry has done a truly outstanding job since he arrived, and I can't believe how fortunate we were to get him. Terry and Maria Christine, even though it's dark over there in the corner, please stand up, would you? I also want to acknowledge the presence of my old friend, Bob Roberts, from Baylor University in Houston, a native Canadian who spent the last 30 years in America. Bob and I knew each other as a resident in Toronto and have interfaced along the road of life since. Bob is the world's leading molecular genetic cardiologist and brings this enormous dimension to the Heart Institute, which will enrich it tremendously. He, as you know, has just replaced me as the president and chief executive officer of the Heart Institute and already is totally immersed in its activities. Bob and Donna, I know you've stood up once already tonight, but another time won't matter. As for me, I will busy myself in the Senate, and busy I will be. There's a tremendous work to be done, particularly with the Social Affairs, Science and Technology Committee. We're conducting special studies on health, and I hope to make a major contribution in this area along with my colleagues. By the way, I would like to acknowledge the presence of my colleagues from the Senate here tonight, from both sides of the chamber, and thank them for being here. It, it means being away from their home constituencies on a weekend, and I can assure you that particularly at this point in time, there are very few free evenings for senators. So I deeply appreciate this. And uh, I would like to uh, mention, and I may miss some of you, but anyway, those that I know are here, my leader, John Lynn Staunton, Marjorie LeBreton, Janice Johnson, Joan Cook, Gerald Baudouin, Terry Stratton, Mike Forrestal, Pierre Devaney, uh, Michelle Biro, and of course, the big M, Frank Mahovlich. So as I said, I will be busying myself with the work of the Senate. I also would like to do some international health and science consulting, particularly in countries outside Canada, to maintain my knowledge of the field and contribute something to others. So I will simply go on searching, for in the wise words of the poet, no search ever fails. The only way we can fail is when we give up the search. If dreams didn't exist, there would be no future. Failure is to not go on searching forever. Good night and thanks.
Ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce our next performer, I'd like to thank once again on your behalf, Dr. Keon, for his words of recollection, but also words of vision and of inspiration. Thank you, Dr. Keon. And it is now a pleasure to introduce to you the chairman of the Hart Institute Foundation, Mr. Bill Colby, who will come and make a special announcement. Mr. Colby. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to say that my carefully prepared text by Tom Hewitt, I lost it. So I have to wing this. <laughs> oh, here we go. Anyway, I, you know, there's an old saying in vaudeville that never followed kids or animals, but imagine following Dr. Keon. I mean, what am I supposed to say up here? Wow. I've been associated with the Heart Institute directly for about nine, ten years now, and uh, Dr. Keon, or Willie from the Valley, as they call him, has been the most phenomenal person and the most inspirational person that I've been involved with. And, and it's just a treat to deal with them. And, and I always tell a little story, and, and I don't know, maybe some people don't think it's as important as I do, but here's a guy, and we've all seen his accomplishments tonight. And we were at a board meeting one, one day, and he couldn't wait to after the board meeting. He said, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. So I said, okay. And so we got away from the meeting. We went upstairs, and they just put a new addition on. Now, this is the fellow who probably operated for 12 hours a day before and saved 14 people. And he has to show me the lounge that they built for the staff on the top of the new addition. And it was so important for him, and it was so meaningful that it was so nice that the staff was being looked after. And he, like, he, from one hand, can be saving lives, and on the other side, He's thinking of the staff and, and, and the lounge and what's there for them. So it's just been totally rewarding for me. It's been a wonderful time, and I just enjoyed every moment of it. And I'd like to take just a separate aside here to say a special thank you to someone who worked with Dr. Keon through the years, Sue Menzies. She's here tonight. <laughs> Also looking gorgeous, I might add. But uh, so a special thank you to Sue. And I'm sure this is not the end of Willie Keon. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more from him. He's on to another career. He's in the Senate. He's talking about boards. He's talking about we'll hear a lot more from him. This is not the kind of guy that is going to be over with tonight or next week. Now the most important thing, and thanks to this wonderful community and all you wonderful people, we have raised net net tonight two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And a special thanks to Dr. Keon from me. He's someone like the rest of us. If he's touched you, you'll never forget him. So thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Keon, and God bless.